we are prone to overestimate our ability to withstand temptation and to underestimate how much the Lord is involved in keeping us from falling into grievous sin. I was thinking about that when looking at Matthew chapter 26 this morning. This is the New Testament reading for today. I know in these daily videos, most of the time I focused on the Old Testament reading, but I want to take a look at what transpires in Matthew 26, verses 21 and 22, because it's a very instructive moment in the lives of the disciples of Jesus. Jesus is celebrating the Passover with them, and he has some bad news, some terrible news. He says, truly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Now, we who know the entire story know that the one who betrays him is Judas Iscariot, but what do the disciples do? What do they say? First of all, we're told that they're very sorrowful. And then that they begin to say to him, to Jesus, one after another, Is it I, Lord? Now, it wasn't until recently when I was watching a video by my colleague at 1517, Eric Sorensen, that I really thought about those words because Eric pointed out that that's a moment of painful clarity on the part of each of these disciples where they, as it were, see within their own hearts that there is a possibility that they might be the one who betrays our Lord. Now, isn't that instructive for us? It's a time for us to learn some humility and to realize that we do overestimate how much strength we have to withstand temptation. And we greatly, grossly underestimate the fact that our Lord is the one who keeps us from falling into terrible errors and sins. You know, it makes me think of that story from the book of Genesis. This is when, the sec for the second time, Abraham lies about Sarah being his wife. This is the case of Abimelech taking Sarah in. And if you know the story, God appears to Abimelech in a dream and says, you're a dead man <laughs> because Sarah is married to, to Abraham. And Abimelech, understandably so, begins to protest. He says, well, I didn't know. Uh, Abraham said, she's my sister, and she said, he's my brother. And so how was I supposed to know this? I mean, I acted in the integrity of my heart in taking Sarah in. And here's God's response. And I love this. This is Genesis 20, verse, verse 6. God says to Abimelech, yeah, I know that you have done this in the integrity of your heart. And then God adds this, and it was I, it was I who kept you from sinning against me. Now, those are important words for us to note. Because how often in life do we ordinarily see somebody else engaging in some sort of sin and think, oh, man, what, what is that dude thinking? Or why in the world would that woman do that? Or how could they engage in this atrocious behavior? I would never do that. Oh, you wouldn't, would you? Well, maybe you don't know your heart very well because there is within each of us a propensity to great evil. And given the right circumstances, uh, given a whole number of factors, there is almost no limit to what a human being is capable of doing when it comes to evil. All you have to do is read human history, and all you have to do is be honest with yourself to realize that. So, as I've said, we overestimate our ability to withstand temptation, and we underestimate how much God, like he says to Abimelech, has kept us from sinning. Each of those disciples around the table could have been a Judas, and in that moment of clarity, they realize that. Is it I, Lord? God kept them from sinning, just like God has kept you and me from some atrocious, grievous, life-destroying acts. And let us give thanks to God for that, and let us always cast ourselves upon his mercy, knowing that it's not our strength that keeps us from sinning, it's his grace, his strength that does that. So let us cast ourselves upon his mercy, and when we do sin, then let us also cast ourselves upon his mercy forgiving grace, because he is gracious and merciful to forgive us. Thanks be to God for that gift.